Good afternoon everyone. Just wanted to take you on a tour of our Back to Eden garden and how it's doing in the summertime and what we've got planted in there, what's surviving in this hot Texas heat. So come along with us. Let's show you. Well, as you can see, we started a little bit of a, a flower garden out in front of uh, the main vegetable garden here. My wife really wanted some flowers, and this will attract, you know, nice pollinators. It, it said it was a wildflower mix. I think there's some zinnias in there, some other things. I'm not exactly sure. Let's take you into the garden and show you how things are doing here. Now, kind of the point of the video is to help you to understand what you can handle and what you can't and I'll show you where we've run into some issues because of time constraints and uh, what's doing really well so as you can see here we've got a ton of tomatoes in this row right here and over to our our right right here right next to our cucumbers so we had some onions we've already harvested out of this area and we've put some manure down and then put some more wood chips to enhance and further build that back to Eden uh, style garden that we've got going on here. We've got our middle hedgerow here. We've got some lavender in the middle and a hawthorn right next to it and then some bee balm and the uh, fake citronella right there. Some more bee balm here and some more fake citronella that's really getting hit by the heat right now. It's been a hundred for numerous days uh, in a row. We've got some lemon basil here planted with our tomatoes and we'll talk about this companion planting method a little bit uh, later. I did a video about a year ago talking about companion planting but uh, there's a lot to it. Over here on the other side of, the, of these tomatoes we had some onions that we've already harvested out and then rebuilt the bed in this area. Got our asparagus uh, right here as one of our uh, perennials that we are cultivating. The asparagus will always live here. Um, this bed, it'll rotate, but you can see we've got our, these marigolds are doing incredibly well right here but in other places in the garden they're not doing so well. It's kind of odd. It's some marjoram and some thyme to help uh, ward off pests. You can see we've got one, had one last spring cabbage here that we harvested and uh, we're just going to let this, we're going to chop this off at the roots and do the no-till method with it. Let the, let the roots of the, um, the cabbage break down in the soil and feed the soil and then we'll take the rest of the tops here if we don't chop them off and throw them around and let them just break down and just do a chop and drop we'll take that and we'll throw it in our compost pile these beans are trying to hang on they never really did well you can see we've got a few on here which is is nice um, but the leaf hoppers have really devastated these and these beans are actually pretty hardy because these leaf hoppers are nasty 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 I don't know if I wiggle around one of these things you can see the damage that they do you can see actually one right there that little green guy they're, they're just chomping it up pretty good you can see the damage that they they do to it and they're really really difficult to get rid of you can tell uh, this looks terrible. This was so beautiful before. I'm sorry I didn't take a video. This whole trellis was covered with cucumbers uh, pretty much. It's starting to die back uh, because of the heat, one. And two, I think it's got some downy mildew on it. And let's see what we can... Let's see what downy mildew looks like. I believe that's it right there. That yellowing, odd, spotty uh, yellowing. This one shows it a little bit. It's starting to show up. I did spray it with some copper. Oh, here's a great example right there. You already saw our video on powdery mildew. This is downy mildew. Different type of uh, fungus. It's, uh, it's tearing it up pretty good. 
<clears throat> these were spring peppers planted and if you remember from a previous video those are spring were spring eggplant and uh, in our previous video we got just devastated by cutworms uh, and it just destroyed almost everything in the garden and a few things survived you can tell that pepper's not not doing too hot down there but so certain things are starting to dry out the salvia unfortunately is starting to die back uh, we've got a few a few carrots still in the garden. They shouldn't they shouldn't really be there. It's it's too hot for them, and we'll get those out of here soon. I don't think there's uh, we picked most of the big ones and they were beautiful and sweet, but uh, I don't I don't know if those are going to do anything. We let our lettuce go to seed here because it just got too hot. We'll harvest those seeds out. We still got Swiss chard um, doing fairly good over here. And the one in the middle here, this raspberry is an autumn or a fall raspberry. It's a golden fall. Or golden autumn? Golden autumn. That's what it is. And the other two are dormant. That's a dormant and that's a dormant over there. And you'll have to excuse the, uh, the rushed trellis. I'll talk about that in a minute. We've got our strawberry patch and these things are starting to go uh, really well. They're starting to take off. They were really, really tiny before. We ha we need to build back up this soil right here. And our zucchini is finally starting to die back. Our uh, Bianco Lugo Italian white zucchini here is dying back. We'll probably just let that compost down and let it chop and drop itself back into the bed to feed the bed. I know we've got some bigger zucchinis probably. Oh, there's a little zucchini right, right there. Oh, I see one. I don't know if you can see it, it's in there. There's a couple zucchinis, and we still get several zucchinis out of this. I think the powdery mildew is almost gone. I see a little bit here, but uh, we did a good job at getting rid of that. Oh, actually, it's living on the top. I'll have to hit it again with the copper. You can see this big metal middle section here. We we didn't we didn't complete the garden. We didn't have enough material uh, when we bought it. Uh, at the beginning enough wood chips and compost so this kind of went um, undeveloped and we're going to slowly develop it over time now point of the video really is to talk about how much you can handle on your homestead and how much to start i think i went overboard even with this middle section not being done uh, this has been a lot to take care of and i'll tell you why so our family has grown it has grown by a sweet little girl who is three months old and it's grown by one two-year-old border collie and he uh, will do an introduction uh, to Duke uh, the border collie uh, soon introduction video but they take up a lot of time and I'm not able to get out here more than maybe one hour uh, every day except for uh, Sunday when I'm out here pretty much all day long and uh, so Sunday's a good time to uh, to get out for me to and just knock things out and don't put in more than you can handle so this is a big thing right taking care of a garden is a lot of work some of you may know that some of you may not so you're gonna spend upwards of 50 percent of your time harvesting and you have to build the soil and you have to prune and you have to treat disease and you have to weed and you have to do a lot and water and all these other things and if you have a lot of other life uh, not interruptions that's a terrible terrible word but um, just things going on in your life uh, like a baby like a dog like a job like a whatever don't go overboard. I think I went overboard because as you can see over here, this section is all grown up. Now this was my tilled area where I had potatoes which were very successful this year. And I had some, some bush beans, um, but I had some lentils and some chickpeas which actually worked out pretty well before this got overgrown with this uh, horrible, tough, nasty bahia hay. Ah, but this was going to be some winter wheat, some soybeans, some oats, but uh, 
that just is not going to happen this year. We did get the okra in on the end, and this is doing really, really well. Okra, okra loves, 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 loves the uh, the hot weather, so that's doing fantastic. Let's see, over here we had our sunflowers, and you see the last two are drying out. I think that top one's not done yet, but this last one's ready to harvest. And we've got our melons. Uh, sunflowers and melons grow really well together. And you can see we've got some beautiful uh, big melons and some different types of melons growing in here. My little girl's garden that I was trying to teach her, she's four, trying to teach her how to grow. She had some carrots and some radishes and some melons. And unfortunately, she, as you can see, it's a, it's a weedy jungle here. She hasn't learned really how to, uh, how to take care of it, but that's part of the learning process, right? This is her spot, and she's actually got there's some big melons in here that we're going to harvest out of there. Believe it or not, I still have squash. <laughs> squash should be really dying back, and it is dying back in some spots, but I've got some butternut in here. I've got some cream of the crop white acorn squash, and here's one. There's one right there. Uh, there's, I know there's a big one over here. i got to harvest that today. And there's some honey boat, Delectia honey boat, uh, which are phenomenal is my wife's favorite they are amazing amazing from baker seed uh, baker creek seed company and you know this is my first time planting sweet potatoes and it's gotten overrun with the weeds and it's kind of going crazy itself i don't know how much we're going to get out of here probably not that much because i'm just letting it get out of hand uh, but i'll let you know i'll give you an update on that here were our pole beans, and they got destroyed also by the thrips, which are leaf hoppers, the green leaf hoppers, and some other types of thrip. Um, the only thing that would really kill the thrips are the uh, the orange oil. So, anyway, that's you can see where the potatoes were here. See, I've still got this black plastic down. I just ran out of wood chips. I have to get some more. But they can be expensive in my area of the country because there are paper mills here. I think I've mentioned that before. Anything get, that gets chipped in large quantities, anyway, goes to the paper mill. And some other things go to uh, just the side of the road. They chip it on the side of the road. They don't take it anywhere. That's available for me to take. Oh, well. No big deal. So, I hope you enjoyed our little tour. Um, it doesn't look as vibrant as it did before. It was really, about a month ago, man, this place was just, it was green, it was lush, it was beautiful. There was fruit everywhere, i.e. cucumbers and squash and everything like that. But it just got to be overwhelming with, uh, with the baby here. So do what you can do uh, you know I started the garden when the baby wasn't here and I figured that ah, I'd just be harvesting by the time she got here and we had to give a ton of attention to her not so much not true um, this garden takes a lot even though this is back to Eden style which is beautiful and it just keeps it keeps down on the weeds look so if, if you look around Here's one weed, no big deal. No weeds here, no weeds here. There's really nothing going on anywhere. Oh, little weed there, no problem. Um, it really suppresses the weeds, which is, is a blessing. But there's still a lot of work to be done. And you have to manage that. And manage your family, manage your job, and manage your whatever else you need to manage <clears throat> and do it do it well because if you let this thing get out of control you, you're not gonna be having a fun time right so in my opinion if you let it get out of control what can happen uh, well fruit can start to drop on the ground and rot right and then that brings bugs and then those bugs multiply quickly and they will start to devour the rest of your garden and then also that rot brings disease. 
And if you're not constantly out there almost every single night harvesting and taking care of things and getting rid of the rotten fruit and tossing it in the compost pile and picking the fruit so it doesn't rot and you know controlling those weeds that do appear uh, depending on your style of garden right then it's gonna be tough it's gonna be tough to come back from that so if you don't give it attention every day like certain other things in your life right if you don't give it attention every single day it's gonna be hard once you pass this point of no return to to get back to it and to get back to a point where it's not a whole ton of work um, it's just a, a moderate amount of work over a constant uh, period of time you're gonna be you're gonna be out here days straight and just trying to rehab things and you get frustrated and it's just not gonna work so Anyway, I hope that helps. I mean, the idea was to tell you to, to, to not go overboard, um, to show you what we've got here and to tell you it was too, it's, it's too much. I, I'm, I'm pretty stressed about it. Uh, it. It looks decent now, and it, like I said, it looked better a month ago, but um, it's almost overwhelming. I've been out here in the dark numerous times this past week and I can't see the tomatoes in front of my face <laughs> trying to pick them and uh, anyway um, that's our experience right that's the point of the channel that's our experience we did too much to start so is that to say that if you have a new baby a new dog another a four-year-old daughter like we have uh, who's a great help um, is that to say that they can't or you can't handle all of that no everybody's different um, everybody can handle different things uh, in amount of you know responsibilities and stress and work and maybe I'm slow who knows <laughs> right um, start off slow you're gonna enjoy yourself more and I think you might have a more successful experience than we've had the first year at this property. Um, like I said, I've done it other places, but at that point we didn't have kids. And we had a smaller plot of land, and we built the soil, so on and so forth, over time. Anyway, we appreciate you watching. And if you have any questions, always be kind and leave them in the comment section below. Go to our website, countrylivingexperience.com, if you want to check out our blog and our tool store, uh, our recommended tools. We hope you subscribe to the channel. Thank you to all of our subscribers. Have a great day, and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.